welcome to Medical Dialogues, your daily dose of health and medical news. I am Dr. Nandita Mohan and here is what we have for you all from the world of medicine. The early detection in depression during pregnancy. Depression in pregnant and postpartum people is a very serious problem. Rather than using a screening tool with a cut-off score to detect a depression in every pregnant and postpartum patient, clinicians should actually ask patients about their well-being as a part of their usual care. This recommended by a new guideline from the Canadian Task Force on Preventive Healthcare, which has re recently been published in Canadian Medical Association Journal. Now, however, there is little evidence that universal screening for depression using a standard questionnaire and cutoff scores, it usually improves the long-term outcomes for these patients, indicating that more research is definitely needed. The researchers were disappointed to find insufficient evidence of benefit to universal screening with a questionnaire and cutoff score. Rather, it is best for primary care clinicians, therefore, to focus on asking just a mere asking patients about their well being at visits. The emphasis is on an individualized rather than one size fits all approach. In creating the guideline, the task force engaged patients to understand their values and preferences around screening to inform these recommendations. The participants felt strongly that a discussion about their depression state with their healthcare provider during pregnancy and the postpartum period is definitely critical. The guideline is aimed at healthcare providers, including physicians, nurses, midwives, and other healthcare professionals who interfere with pregnant and postpartum patients. It replaces the previous guideline from the task force that was published in 2013. Cardiovascular disease in early stage Hodgkin's lymphoma patients. Treatment advances have improved the survival of individuals with Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a type of cancer that affects the lymphatic system. But therapies can increase the patient's risk of developing heart problems. A recent study that was published online in the Cancer Journal, which is a peer-reviewed journal of the American Cancer Society, it reveals that people with early-stage Hodgkin's lymphoma are now at higher risks of dying from cardiovascular disease rather than from cancer. The multi-center study included close to 16,000 children and adults who were diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. The researchers conducted this study because cardiovascular disease may be the most common non-malignant long-term complication and a prevalent cause for non-malignant death following treatment in Hodgkin's lymphoma survivors. The study also found that among the patients with stage 1 and stage 2 classic presentation of Hodgkin's lymphoma, the proportion of deaths from cardiovascular disease, it exceeded the proportion of deaths from the classic disease itself after approximately 60 and 120 months of follow-up. Also, the cumulative incidence of cardiovascular disease mortality, it exceeded that of Hodgkin's lymphoma and other cancers over the period of time. So, in the recent decades, the risk for mortality from classic Hodgkin's lymphoma declined sharply, but the risk of cardiovascular disease's mortality among patients with classic Hodgkin's lymphoma, it declined gradually and slowly or even remained unchanged among some groups. The analysis also revealed that patients with stage 1 or stage 2 presentation experienced a higher risk of cardiovascular disease mortality than the general population at almost all follow-up intervals. Therefore, the researchers they concluded that the results indicate that more effective measures are definitely needed to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease-related deaths in classic Hodgkin's lymphoma survivors. Sleep patterns and its connection with blood pressure. Napping on a regular basis is associated with higher risks for high blood pressure and stroke. This is in accordance to a new research that was published in the Hypertension Journal, which is a journal of the American Heart Association. Now, researchers in China they examined whether frequent naps could be a potential causal risk factor for high blood pressure or even stroke for that matter. This is the first study to use both observational analysis of the participants over a long period of time and Mendelian randomization, which is a genetic risk validation to investigate whether frequent napping was associated with high blood pressure as well as ischemic stroke. The researchers in the study recruited more than 5 lakh participants between the ages of 40 and 69. They regularly provided the blood, urine and saliva samples as well as detailed information about their lifestyle patterns. 
the daytime napping frequency survey it occurred four times the study found that a higher percentage of usual nappers were men they had lower education and income levels and reported cigarette smoking daily drinking insomnia snoring and even being an evening person compared to never or sometime nappers when compared to people who reported never taking a nap people who usually napped had a 12% higher likelihood of developing high blood pressure and 24% higher likelihood of having a stroke the participants younger than age of 60 who usually napped had a 20% higher risk of developing high blood pressure compared to people the same age who never napped at all after the age of 60 usual napping was associated with 10% higher risk of high blood pressure compared to those who reported never napping the mendelian randomization result also showed that if napping frequency it increased by one category from never to sometimes or usually from sometimes to usually high blood pressure risk increased by 40% higher napping frequency was hence related to the genetic propensity for high blood pressure risk therefore the researchers said that these results may be because although taking a nap in itself is not harmful many people who take naps may do so because of poor sleep at night and poor sleep at night is associated with poorer health and naps are not enough to make up for that that's all for today stay tuned to medical dialogues for latest updates never miss a medical update from medical dialogues like subscribe and press the bell icon